Department, and thank you for attending today's Lunch and Learn session. Today's topic is on subcontractor co collaboration with My Communicator with presenter Dennis Earnshaw. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone is in listen-only mode, so if you have questions, please type them into the questions box on the screen, and we will address them at the end of the session. This webinar will be recorded, and we will email out a copy to everyone within a few days. I will now turn it over to you, Dennis. Thank you very much, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Our agenda for today is quite uh, simple. I'd like to take uh, just a couple seconds to talk about my assistant and my communicator, uh, two Sage products that uh, work together to help you get better information and communicate better. And then we're just going to uh, jump in the software very, very quickly. So basically, um, my assistant and my communicator um, came about years and years ago. Um, we worked for uh, the developers of the accounting project management system we're using, and people asked us to find a better way to push information to their recipients, to their users. And so my assistant is a product where, where you can set up pre-built rules, business rules. You do these things today. You monitor for things like vendor insurance or RFIs or change orders that are not approved or uh, invoices that um, haven't been paid or what have you. Um, you can set up many, many of these rules in My Assistant, and My Assistant then will automatically push information out to people to say, hey, we haven't been paid on this invoice, or this RFI has not been answered, or this change order has been approved. This is just a few of the few of the rules in My Assistant here. Um, there's about 250 that come pre-built that you can turn on or create your own. Then what ends up happening is <clears throat> this information shows up where the most of everything, your other information shows up, and that's in your inbox. Um, we found people live in their inboxes. Most people, first thing they come in in the morning is they they open up their inbox, they find out what they have on their calendar, they find out what they have in front of them, who's communicating with them, uh, who do I need to communicate with. Today, that's done via email. So as we were talking to our customers and they were saying, Okay, you're giving me all this information. For example, here's a list of AR invoices that are past due. Help me act on that information. So instead of just giving me the information in a static format, help me actually deal with the information that you're that you're sending me. <clears throat> so what you can do with my communicator is you noticed I opened that email and you probably see a little bit different. This is an email message. I'm right here in Outlook. Instead of the email message being displayed in an HTML table or some other static type format, here the email message is actually displayed in a live grid. I can sort this information. I can filter this information. Let's say I only want to see something here for that particular customer. Um, this is a live grid. Think of this as a live inquiry right here in your email message. Okay, So I'm, I'm sitting here in an Outlook email message. You can see the standard ribbon. You notice there's a My Communicator ribbon up here on top because My Communicator recognized, hey, there's some information from Sage in here, and it came from my assistant, and we're going to allow you to act on it. We're going to allow you to do something with it. Well, one of the common things that people do when they want to act on this is they may really want to go in here and, <clears throat> and click on something and say, let's forward this. Okay, so let's forward one item here. And now what I can do is I'm even going to forward this to, to um, I'm going to forward it to Bob, to Bob Childs is here, okay? So, so I'm going to forward it to Bob over here at a cordon. And maybe I'll put a note on it. I'll say, hey, Bob, could you give me the status of, the, of this invoice? You know, I'm paying this invoice. So what have you? Put everything you want. And off it goes. Now, that's great. So now I've, I've very easily forwarded some information out of say to somebody. Well, the next step is, <laughs> let's say I come back into this email. So I close this email around. I go about my day. And, and I come back in, and I want to know the status of one of those items. So if I were to ever to go back into this email or a future email out of my system, <clears throat> one thing I will see is I'll see these little green asterisks. And what my communicator does is it can track the status of these items. And I can see the activity that I've done. So I see that I forwarded an email to Bob Childs and I asked him to give me a status. 
If I want to see the actual email, I can double click on this and it will open up the email. I can forward it again if I want. It will log it again for me. And more importantly, Bob, if you could, reply to that email. Um, Bob and I are in the same office, by the way. <coughs> um, I'm on the West Coast. He's actually on the East. Uh, if Bob replies to this email, it will actually log his reply. So what I'll be able to see here is for this invoice, I'll be able to see the correspondence that's taken place, in this case, around getting this invoice paid. Now, that same concept works for really any of the information in your site system or your project management system, whether it be RFIs, whether it be change orders, whether it be submittals, whether it be however you work with your, your, your subs, um, or if you're a sub, however you work with the general contractors, really any of your project partners, that information works. Here's Bob's response, right? Bob just replied back to me. So if I, if I look at this again, I'm going to see, I forget which one it was, that um, that email will be logged from Bob. I'll make the log from Bob. So here's his reply right here. So, <clears throat> so that's one thing my communicator can do. Another thing is, earlier today I had I had opened up uh, this one right here, and I had forwarded an email just to myself here. So I said, you know, from sales to Dennis, and then I replied and I said the new date is 10:31. Okay, so let's say I had asked somebody for an updated uh, an updated insurance certificate in this case. Okay, so I'm trying to get make sure everybody has current insurance. So I sent an email out, they gave me a date back. And now one of the things I can do right here from the email message is, see right here it says update Sage. So many, many of our customers said, I get a lot of my information in, in email, allow me to update Sage right from there. So if I click update Sage, it's gonna flip me to that live view I showed you before. See down here below how both emails were logged. See here where I've got to Dennis and then from Dennis to sales. Both emails got logged in the log. But more importantly, I can double click on this row and it puts it into an edit mode. And now what I can do is I can update the information. I can go in here and put in information, type in a company, you know, what have you, and hit update. And it writes the information back into your Sage database. Okay? Now, there's several questions that come up many times when, when people see this. First of all, they say, well, well, hold on here. I want some control over that. And I want control in two ways. I want control as to who can update it. And I'll show you that in a minute. You can, you can completely control who can update each, each record. And I want control as to what fields get updated. So you notice some of these fields cannot be updated. It's either grayed out, whereas some of these can be updated. So you control that as well in my assistant. In my assistant, when you set up, we call them tasks that say, you know, vendor insurance, with a, uh, vendors with external liability insurance, that task, you indicate which, um, which fields you want updated. Now think of all the little pieces of information that you get that come into your email, whether it be custom fields, whether it be uh, vendor contact information, whether it be employee information, whether it be check boxes you set up in job, start dates, completion dates, I received a signed contract back, I, I received a lien waiver back. I, there's, there's, if you actually sit and think about it, there's lots and lots of little pieces of information that where you're constantly going back and updating in your project accounting system. Well, this provides a pretty efficient way to do that. One of the things that my assistant can do <coughs> is my assistant can send things directly out of the system. So my assistant, for example, this RFI situation is set up to send people, send the person I sent the RFI to a notice if the RFI is not returned. So I'm going to go ahead and run and send that. And I believe it's going to send uh, Bob Child an email. And I've got one RFI here that's not, that's not um, answered. So then what will happen is if Bob returns that RFI, and I think I might have an example, I don't know if I do, um, the same concept is true. I can go back in and update the, for example, the answer to that RFI right here from the email message. I know I'm throwing a lot out. Hopefully I'm not going too fast here. So basically what you got from email is you got the ability to work with information in a live format, and you got the ability to go back in and update Sage. So 
as my assistant customers were using the software, they said, okay, we love that. The problem is my inbox gets really full. Okay, My inbox, I've got hundreds and hundreds or maybe thousands of email messages, and it gets really, really full. So, so now what we can do is they say, give us one place where all that information is stored. So notice down here in the lower left-hand corner, we have um, we have a button here. Do you guys see one monitor or two? Can I ask? I'll take those one. Um, we we have a button here that says <coughs> that says my communicator, and my communicator. This will list all of the kind of issues that you've been notified about. So. So here is here is some accounts receivable issues. Um, maybe there's issues around uh, project management, such as RFIs or change orders or what have you. And so they'll be listed right here. Notice here's the RFI that um, the Bob told me about. Here's Bob's response. It got logged. I don't know if you saw it pop in my inbox. But see from Bob to sales. It got logged automatically. I didn't even go into the email message. If you want, I can go back to my inbox. Here's the email. I didn't even open it up yet. And yet, it's logged in the uh, activity log for that RFI. Now, let me tell you where that's, that's kind of a benefit. Many times, where that's a benefit is if the response goes to somebody else in the company, this is a centralized database that's stored on your server. So this activity log is on your server. And so I may want to go in and say, hey, has somebody heard back on this RFI? Or has somebody heard back on paying this invoice? Or what have you. And I can check it right here. I can just open up, the, open up this log. I can go to the RFI and I can say, yeah, Bob, Bob heard back, you know, what did we say here? He said the color of the wall should be blue. Okay, have someone updated Sage. Let's click Update Sage. And I can look here, oh, no answer, so let's just go up the click and record that answer. Okay? I either can cut and paste from the other screen or I can say whatever I want to be. And now we've updated Sage. So. The log, the log provides really access to your to your uh, Sage information right from Outlook. Um, some people use this for things like just a vendor phone list. So here's a vendor phone list. I'll turn activity off here, and I can I can look up vendor phone lists. Certain people may be have the opportunity to update this list. So right here in the log. I want to update the list, and we have a new contact, or the contact name changed, or what have you. So, right here, you can you can uh, do that sort of stuff. Here again, all from within Outlook. So, an another question. Any questions so far? Come up. I don't like them. No questions yet. Okay. Another question that comes up is people say, "Okay, I'm a project manager. Show me all my stuff by job." Okay, so the, so here's things I've been told about. What I can do is I can go up to this Arrange button, and I can say, resort this list. So instead of sorting it by subject, here I got subject, you know, I got my vendor phone list, my my uh, AR uh, AR pass due, my R5 change orders. What you know, you could have kind of whatever subjects you want here. But I want to resort this by job, and I want to look at everything by job. So when I do that, now I can come in here. And I see all of the things, and I just received on these, pertaining to the job. So if I had multiple subjects here, you'd see, you'd see receivables, you'd see past due, whatever, and I can kind of drill into these on a on a job by job basis. So this is also really kind of a real powerful tool. Think of it almost like setting that list on its side and say, okay, resort this by job, or maybe resort this by vendor or by customer, and you can kind of see it all by customer now. And see what you got going by customer. Now I, I don't have many um, issues in my list, so my list is quite short. My examples, but hopefully you see how this could work. Here again, if I had activity, some people ask me the question, "Why is that green?" Well, you can have a due date on these things. Each one of these things, when I forward them, I can assign a due date. And when I assign a due date um, down here, response due date, I didn't assign one. If I assign one that's old. It'll actually turn red and say, "Hey, that's past due." So you can very easily just go in here and see. Let me expand that again. Oops, sorry. See that it's past due because you'll see a little red star right there, and then you can down here and you can see what's past due. I didn't assign a due date when I forwarded it. Sorry. 
um, and you'll see kind of who's passed through on that. So just by scanning down this list, you'll be able to see it'll be either red, there'll be a green, yellow, or red. Green, it's okay. Yellow, it's coming due. And then red, it's past due. And when I say past due, it means you're waiting on someone to, to give you something, is what that means. So my communicator really is um, a, a, in essence, an extension of Outlook that integrates Sage 300. It integrates Sage 300 in your Outlook in two ways. It allows you to uh, interact with your email messages, like I did here, both from a kind of a live perspective. I want to see a live list here. Um, I can do that. I can kind of see this list by looking things up. I can uh, report selected information. And then I can update Sage. And I can do this both from an individual email message perspective, or I can do it from a log. And this log is, is my log. It's a personalized log. It's the things that I've been told about. So each user is going to see their issues that, they, that they're involved with on the conversation thread. So quite a change from the traditional way of kind of using emails with these big, long conversations and, and, and kind of not knowing <clears throat> you know, where a given item stands, and, and if you're like most uh, companies, there's lots and lots of emails that even just go around on where are we at on this item, or what's the status of this item. Whereas with my communicator and the, and, 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 and the log here, you can just kind of look it up, you can act on it, uh, you can assign responsibility, uh, so assign due dates, um, so on and so forth. That's kind of an overview. Any questions? There's one question. How do you clear away some or all of these notifications? Great question. It's real easy. Um, you, you can mark them complete. Okay, so two, 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 that's an excellent question. There's two ways. Remember my assistant, I said my assistant monitors your Sage data. Well, what it'll do is, if, for example, if this, uh, what are we on here, invoice, if this invoice gets paid in, in, in Sage, it'll automatically drop off the list. It doesn't go away. The activity is still there. So if you want to go back later and see what happened, you, you, you can. But it just drops off this list right here. That, that's, that's one way. The second way is, is you can mark something complete. I can go in there and say, you know what, I just got off the phone with this guy, and he said he's going to take care of this. I'm going to mark it complete. And when I do that, see how it grays it out? It doesn't take it off the list because, because you maybe haven't gotten paid yet. You were told you were going to get paid. And if you want, you can go in here and enter a note and say, you know, I'm logged on as administrator, but this would say like Dennis or your name here. But I could go in and say, you know, uh, expect check on, you know, whatever, 1031. Well, <clears throat> so somebody else comes in there and says, why is this complete? Well, they can go in there and look at the note and they can they can see why. Um, so. That's a way that it kind of gets grayed out, but the way it ultimately gets off the list is by actually dealing with the information in Sage and saying, yes, this is complete. There's a third way, and that is you go into my assistant and delete the notification, but most people don't do that. Um, they actually just you know, deal with the issue or say that it's, it's done, and it, and it goes away. Excellent question. Any other questions? Thing right now, if you do have a question, type it into the okay. question box. Did, did, did um, Bob had mentioned, did you want me to, I'm assuming some of the people on the phone are my assistant users, do you want me to just touch base on something we're just about to release actually next week in my assistant that they may be interested in? Or do, do you want me to stand sure. communicator? I think that would be great if you did that. Okay. So <clears throat> we are. Um, about to release um, a new version of my assistant, and um, we've been getting some really interesting feedback on it, and interesting in a good way. Um, we are have added the ability of my assistant. So one of the things that my assistant can do is my assistant can um, send out information in those HTML tables. My assistant can send out reports, <clears throat> whether it be crystal reports or Sage report design reports. And now, uh, my assistant has the ability to create spreadsheet, spreadsheet templates, uh, you know, like an Excel spreadsheet. 
And when I come in here, I can come in and grab a template. And what we basically do here, I don't know if you can still see my screen, what we basically do here is one of the nice things about my system is we have the Sage database integrated into it. And so what you can do, let's see if I can make that bigger. Oops, wrong way. What you can do here is you can take information and drag it into a spreadsheet. So let's say I want to come in here and I want to add the I want to add the, the the contract amount right here, let's say, or the um, I don't know the project manager's name. I'm just going to grab a field. So I just type in that. There's a search capability here, and I want to drag the project manager right there. So I do that, and now what will happen is when this spreadsheet runs, it will merge information from SageN, and it will create a spreadsheet and send someone a spreadsheet. It will send it in an Excel format. So now you have a very easy way, just by dragging and dropping fields out of Sage, to get stuff into Excel. And then when I send it, I'm going to go ahead and send this to the email account I have here. When I send it, it will uh, send in an Excel format. So now my assistant can send reports you know, in, a, in a PDF format, um, both, like I said, Crystal and um, Crystal and um, Timberline, but it also can send things in um, an Excel format. And so um, you can create as many templates as you want. Uh, here again, kind of the ease of use of my assistant along with um, the ease of use of my assistant along with uh, now an Excel format. So I just got that email I just sent, just popped in, and I opened this up, and I've got an Excel spreadsheet attached. And um, all my information from Sage is merged into the Excel spreadsheet. Here it is. And it's, and it's a live Excel spreadsheet. All the formulas and everything are there. It's not like it's just dummied in data. This is, this is, this is Excel. So in this case, if it's the forecasting worksheet, I can go in here and just say, you know, now that's projected projected to be that, and and it changes all my numbers for me and everything. So, quite powerful. Most of you use Excel today, probably. Um, and uh, now this is a way to email people Excel spreadsheets. Very easy way to create them. Um, just just drag and drop from that field list um, in my assistant. And um, one thing my assistant will do is my assistant will actually filter the list by recipient. So if you want to send each project manager just their information in Excel, or each uh, customer, you want to send the customers a list of their past due invoices, so, or you want to send, you know, um, what have you. You can send people information just in just their information, like a superintendent, their labor information, or what have you. Hopefully that makes some sense, but uh, that's, uh, that's actually shipping next week. It's, it's done. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I'll say that. <clears throat> Any questions at all about yeah. my assistant or my communicator? There are no questions. Okay. No, we have said, a question. Is is that part of my assistant? That is part of my assistant. That's correct. Anyone who has my assistant will get that just as part of their maintenance plan. That you're just going to receive. You're going to receive that um, in that release. There's also some other things like. We have the ability to monitor a data field. So if any time a field in Sage changes, someone changes the pay rate, someone changes a vendor address, someone changes something, someone else can be told about it. And we'll monitor that a field was changed in Sage. So sometimes people have situations where maybe someone's getting into vendor setup, and you don't want them changing certain things in vendor setup. I was talking to a client the other day. They didn't want people changing their banking information in vendor setup because they were paying vendors electronically. So they wanted to be told if someone changed the, the banking information. We'll tell you what the old value was and the new value was. Um, that's in the next release as well. This is just part of your, your support maintenance dollars. You're going to get this. OK, the next Any other question is what, what version will that be called, 15? Um, great question. Um, it's initially going to be released with, with Sage 15.1 uh, next week, and then about 30 days after, we're going to release a 14.5. So if you're on Sage 14, you have to wait about 30, 30 45 days. Sage 15.1, you can get it next week. <coughs> I don't, yeah, I think Sage is releasing 15.1 next week as well, I believe. I could be wrong. 
but I'm pretty sure. Okay, the next question is, can you use this a CTC or WIP report to send to the PM and use in my communicator to update values? Yes, you can. You can send a WIP report. Um, the update won't be done from the spreadsheet. They're going to be updated from the um, from the my communicator what I showed. Uh, you know where you have the log there, and you can just click on the log. So if you wanted to today, you could go in my communicator, have that kind of same list, and and be updating with values or cost of complete values right from my communicator. Yes. Okay, great. Any other questions? No other questions. Okay. But if you do have questions, you can feel free to contact us after. We'll be um, emailing everybody the recording and our contact details. So thank you again, Dennis, for today's presentation. And thank sure. you, everyone, again, for attending. And we'll email out the presentation to you all later today. And have a great day.